So we've just done some experiment where we've made some esters. So we've used sort of bucket chemistry where we've put our reagents into a boiling tube, put that into a water bath and heated it until it doesn't smell, until it smells different and creates two layers. The reason that it makes two layers is even though it's got polar bonds within it, normally the carbon chains either side are long enough that we, these are non-polar molecules. So um, there's no permanent dipole in them. This makes them sit on top of our aqueous layer or our alcohol and carboxylic acid layer when we did the reaction. Um, going to quickly go through how we name them because this is a, a, a new compound for us this year and just sort of show you how we do this. So they're made from an alcohol, so you can see an alcohol they're missing its hydrogen, and they're made from a carboxylic acid, you can see it's a carboxylic acid missing its hydrogen. Alternatively, an alcohol and an acyl chloride, so this is an acyl chloride missing its Cl. So their naming re sort of represents that. We consider this carbon chain here as a side chain, like we do with um, any, any carbon side chain. We name it ending in YL. So if it had one carbon, it would be methyl. If it has two carbons just bound to the oxygen, it would be ethyl. Three would be propyl and so on. This has come from the product of a carboxylic acid. So when we react carboxylic acids like methanoic acid, we end up with the methanoate ion. Ethanoic acid makes the ethanoate ion. So the naming of this also makes a bit of sense with that. Here you can see there are one, two, three, don't forget this carbon, one, two, three carbons that have come from a carboxylic acid. So this is the propanoate ion with a side chain basically. So that's why it's called methyl propanoate. If I had two carbons here, ethyl, three propyl and so on. If I had one here, it's methanoate. Two carbons, ethanoate, propanoate, one more would be butanoate and so on. So the naming for these, the easiest way to look at it is look for this functional group, the COO, with a carbon chain either side. If you see the carbon chain either side, the one that's bound to the oxygen is a side chain. So count how many carbons that is and it's a side chain. The one with the COO attached to it is the carboxylic acid ion, as it were. All right. So that's how we name them. Treat them like a, a carboxylic acid ion, so a carboxylate ion, with a side chain. Making them. Now we've just done this and we need to understand why we do everything in the steps that we do. The one we did was an alcohol plus a carboxylic acid and we put concentrated sulfuric acid in it. We didn't put much of that. That is a hint that it's not actually a reagent. If it's not a reagent, why is it even there? Catalyst, Catalyst good. The other giveaway is that it's concentrated sulfuric acid, which is a dehydrating agent. So it's got two jobs. One is it's a catalyst, it drives the forward, uh, it gives a pathway for the forward reaction, and it removes the water. Because it's a dehydrating agent, it removes some of that water that is the product. What do we notice about the arrows that I've put there? Sorry? So what does that mean? Equilibrium, good. So they go both ways, which means it's an equilibrium. If we start removing one of the products, which way does the equilibrium get shifted using the Chatelier's principle? So towards the products, because one of them is being removed all the time. So this has another job. Removal of some of the water will favour the forward reaction. We then add anhydrous sodium carbonate at the end, so it's a solid, um, and that will neutralise some of the sulfuric acid stops it affecting the smell and um, it's anhydrous so we're not putting water back into the because if we add water we drive the reaction backwards again okay we would often do this by distillation because the ester having the lower sorry being non-polar will have probably have the lowest boiling point so we can collect it easily or we might not do it by distillation but we might do it by reflux and then use a separating funnel. And again, this works because we have an aqueous layer on the bottom and an ester layer on the top. So we can run the bottom layer out, chuck it out, and we're left with a pure ester on top. Okay. 
The easier way that I'm not allowed to let you do, because we'd have to use the fume cupboard for it, and we'd never get the whole class around the fume cupboard, is this way. We'd turn the out carboxylic acid into an acyl chloride first, so we'd use thionyl chloride or one of those. Then we'd just react it with the alcohol, nothing else required. It, but it fumes, and the fumes that come off are HCl gas. Because remember, every time an acyl chloride reacts, it makes HCl. So every time we use them, we have to do it in the fume cupboard. So if you're asked to compare and contrast these, one's an equilibrium, one's a reaction. One requires a catalyst and a dehydrating agent and some further steps. This one just goes to completion, then you use a separating funnel. However, you need to do this in the fume cupboard and you need to say the reason, and the reason is that HCl is acidic and dangerous.